fam. It's your favorite cousin, your favorite nephew, your favorite uncle, your favorite son, your favorite father, your best friend's best friend. It's me, Dr. Larry, and welcome to Living For You, the YouTube channel. This is a safe space in which we come together and we talk and we chat it up and we learn from one another and we share and coach one another through this journey that we all share, and that journey is called life. So welcome, welcome, welcome to my lovely faithful family you guys rock with me hard you share my videos you like my comments you you drove me through social media i see you i love you i appreciate you i honor you and i send nothing but great love and vibes in your direction to those of you who watch because my watch time is still there so for those of you who are watching why don't you go ahead and join in the family become a member of this family so that you can engage and indulge and share and all kinds of other things and maybe i'll start doing shout outs possibly in which i'll go through the comment section and if you're in the comment section i'll shout out a few of you how about that so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed for those of you if this is your first time seeing my face hearing my voice i am dr larry smith I am a certified life and spiritual coach, among so many other things like entrepreneur, I'm a historian, I am an educator, there are so many things, theologian, um, spiritualist. Nevertheless, I come here and I talk about different subjects, um, some of a spiritual nature, some about relationships, some about entertainment, educational stuff, history, all kinds of things. I come here and I just sit here and talk with, with you, all my family, and we just engage in these healthy discussions about uplift, but also about understanding of one another and our differences. So if you are newly seeing me, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, but if you want to know more about me, you can actually go to www.liveforyoucoaching.com. That is my official website, www.liveforyoucoaching. There's so much out there. There are programs you can sign up for, courses you can take. You can even sign up to be coached directly by me. Um, that's also out there. There's a lot of stuff out there. So go ahead and um, go out to www.liveforyoucoaching.com and come and find out more about me. And if you want to follow me on social media, well, I'm always on social media. You guys know I'm highly active on social media. You can actually go to my Instagram and Facebook accounts, which is uh, Dr. Larry Smith on Instagram and on Facebook. That's Dr. Larry Smith on both Facebook and on Instagram. So what up, fam? So I wanted to get on here and talk about relationships because there's a lot of things in the headlines about different relationships that are going on. And I wanted to get on here and talk about healthy relationships and understanding healthy relationships. And because I noticed that there are a lot of people, they are have been so consumed and, and so active in toxic relationships or have experienced multiple toxic relationships that they have come to a place of where they've normalized toxicity as it relates to relationships. So whenever they see a healthy relationship like a Sierra and like a, a Russell or Wilson, they are confused and they lash out against it as though it's not real. Some of these people are more inclined to believe that Cinderella dropped the shoe after getting out of a pumpkin and the prince found her in happily ever after. Or that angels fell from the sky, fell in love with women on the earth, had babies that became giants more than there are into understanding and realizing that non-toxic relationships do exist. Especially, it is even worse when I look specifically within the black community. It's almost as though they're expecting toxicity to be a part of every relationship that they see. Um, and it's, it's, it's baffling to me because I think a lot of people have been hurt. I think a lot of people have had certain experiences, but they project their own experiences onto other people. And many times because celebrities and athletes and entertainers and people like that are public, they get the bear of the brunt of what people's projections are on them. Like you look at Will and Jada, we know we had the situation with Will Smith hitting Chris Rock at the Oscars in defense of his wife, right? And there were people who, there were all kinds of sides about that. But the, some of the things that I saw was kind of disturbing to me, it actually grieved my spirit in many ways. One of those things, for example, was the idea of a black man protecting a black woman as a problem, as being something problematic, right? When we know throughout history that has been something very interesting within the black community. There have been times when the majority of black people were enslaved and they couldn't legally or even physically try to protect their wives, their, their children, their daughters, their sons, and even themselves. And so there was a, a, a difficulty in doing that. And then after slavery was over, it still seems as though protecting black women 
was a taboo thing. And apparently, Will Smith hitting Chris Rock at the Oscars in defense of his wife clearly still shows that the protection of black women is still considered somewhat taboo, even within the black community, which is highly unfortunate because those are our mothers, our wives, our sisters, our daughters, our granddaughters, our nieces, our aunties. They are part of an important portion of us. Without the woman, <laughs> no one exists. And so, and, and, and so people have been challenged. And, and of course, uh, again about Will and Jada, people are also challenged with the idea of an open relationship. That they can actually be healthily functioning together in a relationship where they have decided that they're not exclusively just them. That they can are free to have other partners come into their marriage and they've been okay with that for certain many years. Now this has been the speculation for a long time about Will and Jada and finally we got the honesty about it not that long ago and people are having a hard time trying to wrap their head around how stuff like this works. An open relationship can also be a healthy relationship when done right too. It just requires communication, devotion, and commitment to the two who are the, I guess you would say, the primary partners and then everybody else kind of takes a second, second class position to this, to them while at the same time, they're openly communicating. They know what's going on. So when you talk about Jada's entanglement, you guys know the whole August Alcina situation, Will Smith was well aware of that. Now, there were some things about it he perhaps didn't know that were internally internalized in Jada, and they had that discussion at the Red Table Talk that kind of was a little cringeworthy in some ways, <laughs> if we want to call it that. But at the end of the day, this is what they signed up for within their relationship. And so we're not allowed to project our own personal opinions or thoughts or insecurities on them as though ours are any better. And I think, like I said before, I think a lot of people have just normalized toxicity and toxic situations and toxic emotions and feelings and thoughts and actions within their relationship that they don't know how to act around that. So I wanted to get on, especially today, and talk about how to, first of all, how to notice things if they're toxic in your relationship. The first thing, if you guys never communicate, you live as though you're two strangers in the night or however many people are in your relationship and you don't really communicate openly, honestly, authentically with no judgment from one another, then that's a toxic sign. Why? Because in order for any relationship to work, whether it is a loving relationship, whether it is a business relationship, whether it is a family relationship, communication, clear, concise, um, authentic communication is very important. So if you are in a relationship with somebody and you guys rarely speak to one another, that is a red flag. <laughs> that is a red flag down on the plate. Another thing is if you guys argue over everything, right? There, there is inevitably going to be arguments in a relationship. You are bridging two different personalities. You are bridging two different life perspectives and experiences. So sometimes your perspectives and, pers and pers <laughs> your perspectives <laughs> and experiences are going to clash in an argument or in several arguments. But I firmly believe that it's not necessarily the argument that's the problem, it's how you resolve the situation. What is the outcome? Does he or she go to bed tired and, and not talking to each other? Do you not sleep in the same bed after you've argued? Do you not apologize when wounds have been made? If that's not happening, that is a red flag down on the plane. You know, if you're in a relationship that it does not have sexual intimacy. Well, unless it was agreed upon that you were going to be an asexual partnership where you guys were not going to use sex as a form of your intimacy, that is a problem. Because that is one of the easiest ways and the most basic forms of connection in a relationship is through sexual intimacy and getting to know that person on a level that not anybody else really can know them on. Something that between you and them that you have, especially in a regular monogamous relationship. That is your partnership, that is your thing, and this is your intimacy, and you've been sexually intimate with one another, showing each other and, and trying to satisfy each other. Another component of sexual intimacy is the fact that you're literally trying to make the person you with feel good. You're trying to give them pleasure. That's what it's for. No matter what your relationship is, whether it's heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, it doesn't matter. 
your intention for your partner, your loved one, is to try to make them feel good and pleasurable. If that doesn't exist in your relationship, it's a red flag. It's a red flag on the play. If your life goals are in two different directions, if your partner want to move and live in New York, but you want to move and live in Australia, and you guys can't see, see how you can cross that together or, or probably go live in New York part-time and live in Australia part-time or figure out how to work that out, you're just animate about going where you want to go, then that partnership's not going to last. That is a red flag on the play because you're not wanting to share your lives together. <laughs> 90% of the time, I would say long, di long distance relationships are hard. I don't know the percentage of how many of them work, but from what I know of them and from my own experience, having maybe one or two in my life, they don't really work that well, <laughs> you know, because part, for somebody like me who thrives off communication, who thrives off physical touch, these are my love languages, um, I need to be present with my partner as much as I can throughout a week's time. <laughs> so to go weeks and months on end without being around the person that I'm with would actually not feel like a relationship for somebody like me. And I'm sure a lot of you out there have the same feelings as it relates to wanting to be with the person you're with. So that would definitely be a red flag if you guys can't commit to where you're going to be together. Another one I've noticed that a lot of people don't really pay attention to is how that person treats their other family members, right? Especially when it comes to like their children, if they have children prior to your relationship or their parents. If they are just nasty with those people and you witness that, if they can be nasty over the people who knows them better than anybody up until the time you met them, the mo mother who nurtured them and, and, and raised them and had them, the father, if he was there, who took care of them and led them and guide them, and their children who they're responsible for doing those things for themselves, then chances are there's no way they can be nice to you. <laughs> there's no way they can respect you if they can't respect those delicate relationships between those loved ones, like parents and, and children and things like that. And it's very, 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 very important. Very, very important. And if they can't do that, that's a red flag. That means that relationship just might not be a healthy relationship. And then lastly, and there's so many more, but I'm only doing six. <laughs> lastly, if these people that you are with, your respective partner, person, spouse, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, does not tell you the truth when you ask them for the truth. If they always find a way not to tell you the truth, or if you're that person who is never honest with the person you're with, that is a toxic situation. Because honestly, usually when people lie, it's to protect themselves. They're lying because they don't want to face the consequences of the truth. And so when they create something to not face the consequences of the truth, that means they feel like they can't be comfortable enough to be honest with you. See, sometimes we get mad and we say, oh, I'm mad that you lied at me. What is it about you that you keep lying? And we point, 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 point at the person who's told the lie. But then again, it also possibly means that that person doesn't feel comfortable enough being vulnerable and honest with you. And if you cannot be vulnerable and honest with each other, why are you with each other? How can this person defend your life? How can this person protect you? How can this person have your best interest if they don't even trust their own <laughs> best interest with you? And so at the end of the day, that is a red flag. That is toxic. That is toxic. But what we have to stop doing, like I said earlier, we project our stuff onto other people. And we, we don't like, we have this thing of where we just expect things to go wrong. We expect things to be broken. We don't see in our minds that things can actually be working out. If two people are working on their thing together and they have communication, they're the only people who are 100% certain to know what that relationship dynamic is. So when I see relationships like Russell Wilson and uh, Sierra's, or I see relationships like Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith, or I see relationships like Denzel Washington and, and, and Paula Washington, I see Courtney B. Vance and Angela Bassett, I see uh, a lot of same-sex relationships like uh, Juan and Jean Atlanta that are seemingly healthy and functioning according to their rules. I'm supporting. <laughs> I always show love. I think it's beautiful. I love love. I live for and love love. And so therefore, I find it ro refreshing, romantic, 
beautiful. It fills my heart with joy to see people working together to have the best situations for them. And so I don't ever try to project my insecurities or my insecure thoughts or my toxicity on them. I only send them praise because I want to see them work. The more relationships that are public that functions, especially within the black community, especially within the black community, the more relationships that function, it sends a message that it is possible. When we saw Michelle and Barack Obama standing in that White House and, and going in there with their beautiful, lovely family being the strong, dynamic duo that they were, that was a powerful message that if you want it, you can have it. It does not mean that relationships are easy. Trust me, by no means. I have been through several relationships in the corner of my lifetime. Now, some of them have been pretty long term. My longest one was 11 years, and the one that I'm in now is, has been pretty long as well. However, it is we have to be able to understand that, you know, relationships are hard. It requires sacrifice. It requires compassion. It requires commitment. It requires compromise, but on both parts. It, remind, it, it, it requires communication. It requires some arguing sometimes and not feeling good and not being able to understand each other, but trying to understand each other. It requires all of that. But at the end of the day, nothing in its core feels good, feels better than having somebody who holds you in the middle of the night or when it's cold or somebody you know you can pick up the phone and they'll answer for you because you're that person or somebody that you can communicate with and tell all your secrets and grow with and share your life with and spend the rest of that life with that person. That is a wonderful feeling that makes all of the difficulties of relationships worth the work and worth the while. But we have got to get out of this place where we keep condemning beautiful relationships because we have toxic stuff within us. I think it is important for us to go back and point all the fingers towards us, dig in deeper, ask the questions as to why do I see this toxic in this? Why do I call for this to have a toxic situation? I think, for example, they were saying like Sierra was with Russell Wilson for his money. She clearly loves that man. He clearly loves that woman. Why are we even trying to find a reason why that can't work? Other than saying, I wish you well. I send blessings your way. I want this to work just as much as you want it to work because you are a shining example of what a power couple can be. For so many kids who are looking at them as examples of what they want. Even if they don't have the examples in their house with their parents or with their siblings or with other adults in their lives, they can see a shining example that it is possible in spite of everything around them. And that is something we should praise, not something we should try to tear down because of insecurities or an embracing or an acceptance or a, a normalization of toxic stuff within our own relationships, within our own lives and within our own minds, hearts and inner beings. We got to break that habit. We got to stop doing that because that's not healthy and that doesn't promote positivity. You want to send light in the world. Don't cast darkness. It just is what it is. We got to be able to shine brighter than the next <laughs> and then the next and then the next and then the next. But anyway, that's it, y'all. I want to get on here. I had to get on here and do a video. I know it's been like four days, so I have to do my videos. Keep liking the videos. Like, like, like. I mean, just keep pressing that like button. Like, press it like a thousand times. Like, press it like 10,000 times. I need like 10,000 people just to like press, 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 press. Share the videos because I'm saying things that a lot of people need to hear. So just go ahead and kind of subversively share with your friends on Facebook. They'll catch it and like it and send it and shoot it all around. <laughs> and then subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed. That's just an easy button to do. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And as I always say, I get out of, on here because of love. I have love for you, family. The highest love that a human can possibly experience and give on this earth. And as I always say, I will see you in the next video.